So it's 9 a.m. on a Monday. Um, I've been spending uh, most of this weekend, took a couple of days off Monday and Tuesday, but I've been spending most of this weekend uh, installing these three MPPT controllers, uh, Victron controllers, 250 amp, 100 volt, and 130 amp, 100 volt. So um, the 250 volts can handle strings of eight of my 190 watt solar panels. Um, I could overload them and do a little bit more, but um, run out of roof space eventually. The 30 watt, I mean the 30 amp can do uh, six panels. Um, so what I'm going to end up doing is uh, six for both of the um, the 50s and um, two roof mount for the 30 and maybe some ground for the to add into the 30. Two panels are hooked up. And I'm pulling in 247 watts at 9 a.m. So 247 of my potential 380 at 9 a.m. So not bad. There's some bird shit on the panels too. That never helps. All right. Get these other two panels hooked up and uh, will really help uh, supplement the air conditioner draw that we have going on. So. All right, guys. Um, solar panels are mounted and installed. I've got uh, what is it? Uh, Eleven hundred and forty watts. There's six panels. Each panel's one hundred and ninety watts. Adds up to eleven hundred. It's uh, 11 a.m. I'm semi overcast day uh, here in Phoenix, and uh, I'm producing over 900 watts. So uh, yesterday I only had four panels hooked up, and I actually uh, recorded well recorded in my head um, more than the rated output of these panels coming in. So uh, these are two point toe point panels T O P O I N T looking great oh and uh, the wiring is not done obviously um, right now I just have it I'm sorry climbing around on the roof out of breath a little bit um, right now I just have the wiring double wrapped around the antenna here coming down over the edge going on the inside um, I'm going to be installing another row of panels up here all the way back most likely uh, skipping the sunlight there for the shower um, should be able to get another six panels in so uh, sun is behind some clouds right now thin layer of clouds but it's still behind clouds and uh, pulling in 914, 912 watts, uh, bouncing around. Um, once it comes out behind those clouds, I expect this to uh, to hit 1,100 watts or more. Um, we'll see. So this is the setup here so far. I got my three MPPT charge controllers. Um, those come down into some little bus bars. Uh, those bus bars are hooked into the main bus bars uh, through a fuse and over on the uh, negative side through an amp meter. Alright guys, I'm getting ready to run my solar wire which is currently running on the outside of the trailer coming in here. And here's where all my vent stacks are. I've got three of them. Alright, um, so seems like everything I do I underestimate the effort. Um, so I've got my two strings of solar panels, both the driver's side and the passenger side wired up. The only thing that's left to do is to jump up on the roof and connect the panels in with the breaker off. And then I'll come down here and flip the breaker on. Um, what can I tell you? 
So this is the new string over here. This is the string that I originally had. I just ran the wires internally. So I've had this up and running. You can see that it's in bulk mode. Um, the wires have run up through here, along the top of the ceiling. Now, this is the basement ceiling, which is really the floor. And what I did, as you guys know, I came down through these vent pipes. Now, uh, hard to move around in here. Um, this looks really sloppy, but it's actually pretty tight. I just need to come back with some silicone and seal up some tiny holes in, in this white sealant I used. Like I said, it looks ugly, but uh, looks really ugly. Had actually a hard time getting the, uh, the, the caulking gun back here. Um, I was just trying to seal up around this gland, so really, really sloppy, but uh, let me go back up on the roof and hook in the panels so we can uh, come back down here and power on that, uh, that driver's side string of panels, which I uh, just recently installed and see how they're doing. It's cloudy days, so uh, <laughs> yeah, mileage will vary. Um, all right, be right back. All right, back up on top of the trailer. That's getting old, climbing up and down. I still need to tidy up all the cables. But as you can see, um, the cables are now run through the vent pipes. And the vent pipes have the new vent caps on the Siphon 360. Um, <clears throat> So, other than having to tidy up the cables, we're plugged in, and I'll uh, run downstairs, and i got to jump over my AC here a little bit. There we go. We'll run downstairs and uh, <coughs> check the voltage coming up to the circuit breaker, and if everything looks good, we'll go ahead and flip on the breaker and uh, see what happens with these new panels. See you in a sec. All right, back in the basement. Uh, it's getting a little over 80 volts, which is what I expected. So I went ahead and flipped it on. Now we have this one in bulk. And we have this one in bulk. This middle one is either gonna be used for miscellaneous panels that I install on the roof, uh, although I'm running out of room up there, uh, or it'll likely be used for uh, roughly 400 watts of uh, flexible panels that I'll use uh, as a ground to plug. Just installed a Carnetics P5 USB. Um, a lot of these Victron devices use this little four pin, I think they call VE Direct. Let me pull one out here. Yeah, a little four pin VE Direct interface. And uh, if you have a color control panel, as I do, you'll know that that can only handle two. Well, I've got three Victron charge controllers and needed a way to hook those into the color control panel, right? So, so I needed a way anyway to get these three charge controllers um, hooked into the color control panel. And the way you do that is instead of buying the VE Direct to VE Direct cable, you get a VE Direct to USB but what Victron tells you and if you actually read the directions is that it requires a powered hub um, you could just go and buy a cheap little powered hub from Amazon um, and if you have a 110 outlet he could probably run it um, I didn't out here and yeah, I kind of came across this thing, which is an automotive, um, automotive powered hub, and um, it uh, supports up to 24 volts or 24 volt systems, which that's what I have down here. 24 volt power banks, 400 amp hours, and um, I went ahead and hooked that up, and I've got everything plugged in. 
and now when I go to uh, Victron's VRM portal, I can see all three charge controllers there. Likewise, the color control panel is reporting the sum of all three charge controllers. Excuse me while I scoot around in my, my basement here. So, the color control panel is reporting 100, I'm sorry, 1,200 uh, and, you know, almost 13, 1,300 watts. So, it's a little after 3, I think it's around 3.30, maybe even 4 o'clock here. Um, so, the fact that we are bringing in, we're bringing in close to 13. Yeah, there we go. Bouncing around. There must be a pigeon pooping on a panel. Um, oh, you know what? My batteries are almost charged up, so... Anyhow, um, all three charge controllers are reporting. One of them is not being used right now, so uh, it's not reporting anything. But it does show up on the Victron's VRM portal, which lets you monitor all your, all your devices. I can also go into my menu here and you can see all three charge controllers show up. So, um, you know, if you are indeed a Victron Minion and you need multiple VE Direct uh, cables hooked into your color control panel, one way to do it is with this powered hub by Carnetics P5 USB. And then you get this. All right, ladies and gents, au revoir.